Hello, this is a video on distributed models in GPROMPT. So basically, um, this video covers a summary of the main points uh, you need to remember to be able to implement uh, distributed models in GPROMPT. So GPROMPT treats time differently. So the way time is, is treated in other programming languages like uh, MATLAB or Python um, is different. Time doesn't really mean anything in those um, uh, programming languages. But in GPROMPT, time is reserved. It's a reserved word. So you cannot use time directly in GPROMPT, basically. Now, um, to implement time derivative, so if you have DDT of a variable in your uh, model, so what you do is you simply put a dollar sign before the differential variable. So if you have DV dt, then to write DV dt in G prompt, you simply do dollar sign V. So D dt operator itself is represented as dollar sign in G prompt. For example, if you have that equation, DZ dt equals minus BZ plus XY, it is written as dollar sign Z equals minus V times Z plus X times Y. Okay. Now, all variables have intrinsic time dependence in G prompts. So basically, it means that all variables that you declared, they, they vary with time in G prompts by default. So, which means if you now have a variable that depends on other than time, so we have a derivative with respect to other than time, it becomes a partial differential equation, basically. So if you have a differential equation where you have derivative of a variable with respect to um, an independent variable that is not time, for example, space, maybe x, then you treat that differential equation as partial differential equation in GPOPs. So that this is the main thing you want to remember, okay? So to write that equation, you, you need this partial keyword. This partial keyword is, is needed to be able to write the equation. Let's say you want to write this equation, d squared u dx squared plus 6 du dx minus u equals 5 in GPOMPs. What you do is that you first declare a distribution domain. So this distribution domain is what represents this axial domain, this x that you have. So that is basically um, a domain that runs from 0 up to L. L is like the full length. Let's assume it's, you have a tube. So the exit of the tube is zero, and the uh, the inlet rather of the tube is zero, and the exit of the tube is L. So you can see that that's exactly what it is. So this is the range of the of the domain that you have. So you know to solve the problem, this problem is solved numerically, and this domain is discretized. So it's going to slice the domain in bits, and the equation will be solved within each domain. Okay. Then, um, so to write this equation, because the equation, the, the domain will be discretized, you have to solve the equation at every slice of the domain. So that's why you need a for loop that goes through each slice of the domain. Now, what you've done here is that for z equals zero, this vertical bar plus, what it does is that it excludes the, the lower bound. And this vertical bar minus excludes the upper bound. The reason is because we are going to specify boundary conditions whenever you are dealing with the partial differential equations. So we need boundary conditions at the exit and at the inlet. So that's why we have to exclude that here in the equation. So if you don't exclude the uh, the, the the inlet and the outlet, then G prompt the complaint that you've already specified what is happening at the inlet and at the outlet. So why are you specifying another equation for that? So you get an error. So that is what this is doing. Now, here you have z in the parentheses here in that equation is because the value of u is not the same within each slide. So you need to calculate u with, for each slide. Okay, so that's why it's tracking the value of u at the specific location you are in the domain. Then you have axial, comma axial here. He said, this is the variable or equation or whatever you have. So you have axial twice. Why? Because you have a second order derivative because it is d squared. Okay. So because it's d squared u, that is why it is u, uh, comma, axial, axial. 
Okay. Then this part is just is, this is just uh first order du dx. That is why it's just one axial. Okay. So okay, apologies. Um there's an error here. This should be six. There should be six here. Six times partial uz comma axial. Okay, minus uz equals five. Okay, so that is how to write that equation in G terms. So this indicates first order because it's just one axle. Now, the vertical bar plus and the vertical bar minus excludes the upper bound, as I said before. This is done since boundary conditions are, have already been specified. So, to solve the problem, you need to set the distribution domain in the process entity. So, when you're in the process, you provide a value for the distribution domain. So now let's assume you've created a copy of the model and you call it problem. And to set the 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 this the, the actual domain that you already specified for the this under the distribution domain, you do uh, problem dot axial and you set a value BFDM. This is a discretization method you are using, and the order is one and the number of points. Uh, is 100. So with one, the order is basically the order of the polynomial um, the numerical method is using to approximate the derivative. So there's nothing too uh, complicated there. Now, BFDM means backward finite difference method. Okay, this is like a numerical method that is used to solve the differential equation. Then there are some other ones. Other ones that you have includes forward finite difference method. We also have central finite difference method. And we also have orthogonal collocation, finite element okay. method. So depending on the um, method that you have, depending on the problem that you have, you choose the appropriate uh, discretization method. So you need an understanding of the problem to be able to choose the right one. So, so how do you solve, how do you write these equations in G prompts? This DC, DZ, as I said before, you need a for loop. So you, de you declare this axial domain earlier, so which is basically this domain, the uh, distribution domain here. The axial is the one that goes through the, is the one for Z, and the radial is the one for R. So it's basically partial C, then Z, comma, axial. It's just first order. So to write the second one, it's going to be for R, starting from zero up to R, which is the end of the domain, then Partial, so this is the first um, um, derivative operator. Partial, then you have k multiplied by partial t r. Then radial, this radial is for this uh, domain, and the other radial is for that domain. Okay, and for the uh, the last one, this is second order. You have d multiplied by partial c z, comma axial comma axial. So you need axial twice because this is second order um, derivative. Okay. So it's just a quick video on how to uh, uh, solve simple uh, distributed model in G prompts. Hopefully, hopefully this helps. So if you have any questions, let me know in the in the comment section. Thank you. Bye bye.